Hi, I'm Morgan Intrican. I'm the publisher of Grove Atlantic, and I'm here today with Carl Marlantes, the author of Matterhorn, uh, which is a remarkable first novel uh, that has maybe the most interesting story behind it of any first novel I've ever published. Um, Carl has been working on the book for over 30 years, 30, right? 35. I first tried to sell it in 1977. What motivated you to write this book? Writing it, I think there was certainly uh, some catharsis in it. I mean, it was sort of like I, I had to deal with my own stuff from the war, and this was a way that I could do it. And I'd written a, a first, first novel, which got thrown away, that was more therapy than fiction. And I got that out of my system, and then I started on this one. And this, was, this one's truly fictional. And, but, you know, someone once said, it's like, well, you could have just kept a diary. You know, like, why'd you keep hammering away for 35, 30, you know, whatever, seven years to get it, get it published? And I, it forced me to think about it. And I thought, boy, you know, there is such a chasm in this country between people who have been in the military and people who aren't. And they don't, they're far apart. And here's two chasm stories. It's, um, I got back from the war and I just returned. And I was assigned to the Pentagon. And I had to take some papers from the Pentagon over to the White House. So I'm full uniform. And I've probably been back from the war a month or something like that. And I'm walking down, I guess it's Pennsylvania Avenue. And across the street were a bunch of kids, um, you know, my age. And they're waving Viet Cong flags and North Vietnamese flags. And, and they're shouting obscenities at me. And I wanted to just say, gosh, you know, I'm, I'm just like you. I mean, I, I'm, I'm me. I'm just me. You know, I'm not, it, it, you know, and my friends are like younger than you are. I mean, what are you, got, you know, yeah. couldn't reach them. And then <laughs> after I got out of the Marine Corps, and I, I had, uh, um, I had kind of fallen for this girl. She was writing a master's thesis on D.H. Lawrence, so, you know, she's literary and all that. And, but by that time, Vietnam veterans were hiding. I mean, it was like my hair was down to my shoulders, and it was like, sure, love, you know, all that. And, and I thought, well, about time I told her that I was, I'd been in Vietnam in the Marine Corps. So I, I told her, and she literally recoiled. I mean, just, wow. and I, we were sitting on the steps that were, went up to her apartment. She stood up, and she said, oh, God, they're the worst. And up the stairs she went, and again, I'm just, you know, what's that? And I think that I've been trying to reach across that street and up those stairs probably for the whole time. I just want to sort of tell the, what it's like for us and our side of the story and my friends. Why should someone read this book right now? What's its relevance today? Oh, um, well, I think that that chasm that I'm talking about in, in my generation still exists. I think that this country is in serious difficulty of just splitting off its military from, from its society. I think that, that it's too easy to just say, we've got a volunteer army and you know, they get paid to do it. And you send them over there three or four times. And, and this chasm that, that exists from the war, I want to try and heal that. I mean, my own brother was against the war. I can't, you know, couldn't have, have that kind of divide in my family. And he and I worked it all out. Why can't we work it out as a, as a group? I mean, do we have to actually be like the Civil War and have our whole generation die before the war against, between the states gets over? I mean, you know, so I'm hoping to reach those people. And I'm hoping to reach the people who are younger, who are dealing with the military in Afghanistan and Iraq. I mean, clearly it's a controversial war. But understand, that's all just get bigger.